Hello everybody, welcome back to Level 1 News. Today is September 15th and we're doing business and social. And there's a special new segment at the end, which is weird marketplace finds that I happen to see on Facebook Marketplace. And this will, this will be kind of a quick one because we got stuff we got to do. Yeah. So, Amazon. They need some goodwill right about now, wouldn't you say? Yeah. What can Just they do that won't cost any money, but there'll be an amazing PR stuff? <laughs> well, I think there'll be some money spent here, but <laughs> in terms of the money they have, it's probably not a huge expenditure, right? And I got to say, this is definitely going to help them with their PR. Amazon to cover 100% of college tuition for U.S. hourly employees. Amazon's offering to pay the full college tuition costs, including books and fees, for its 750,000 hourly U.S. employees. The catch... You still have to work for Amazon. For how many years after you graduate? How are you going to do that and go to school? <laughs> I don't think they can enforce that. <laughs> but it is going to be tough. You're going to have to go to school in a town that has a fulfillment center. Right. Are there a lot of towns that have a fulfillment center and a college? They probably are, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? And, uh, but I know a lot of people who did this with UPS. It's not that different, right? I said the grocery store I used to work for had a program like this where they'd pay for like a portion of your schooling. But then you had to agree to work there as a manager for five years after. Oh, I didn't yeah. read that in this. Did they have a catch like that in this one? They probably will. Uh, the uh, amount of energy that you have to have as an individual to be able to do this and to go to school will be incredible. This will probably put evolutionary pressure on the next generation <laughs> or two of, of people. That or they'll, they'll start limiting it like you have to work a minimum 30 hours a week or... Yeah, low hours would actually help you here, right? Like if you could somehow just get away with like 15 a week... Now, they say full everything. Do you, this has got to be limited to undergraduate, right? I would think so, yeah. yeah. And maybe not, you know, public universities or the details will emerge. Well, they said that there's definitely a certain number of schools you can do it with, but they said it was like 90% hmm. of the universities, which means no Ivy League, I guess. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I went to Harvard while working through the Amazon warehouse. I, that would be a hell of a story, right? Yeah, you well, future politicians book. would, like, groom their offspring to be that. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know how they sent the royal family to serve in the military <laughs> just for the spec? It's like, just for the PR and stuff? Yeah. The next, well, the president's too old, but, you know, like, whoever's got a young child in government is like, no, you have to do your Amazon year. <laughs> it's like a military service in North or South Korea. You only have to work at that warehouse once a week. So that we can say that you worked at the Amazon warehouse to put yourself through school. But come on. But yeah, you'll actually be in like a cushy internship job in the air-conditioned office area. It's like, yeah, now you're going to be on the fifth floor and you're going to have a corner office, but pee in a bottle once in a while. And, uh, <laughs> For that authentic experience. Put that on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. And it's not just paying for all of your tuition, but Amazon is taking over another business. And maybe that's why they announced both of these at the same time. Because, uh, wow, are they getting powerful. Amazon unveils the first of its own smart TVs and will bring TikTok to, five TV, uh, to Fire TVs in the U.S. and Canada. So Fire TV is Amazon's operating system. Uh, it's going to run on pretty much all your appliances, from your fridge to your television. And this is going to make Amazon the gatekeeper for not just their own video, but also Hulu, Netflix, and whoever. You think, is it now, with all of the net neutrality stuff, California, is it California legal for them to give you Prime for free if you own that TV? I think the answer is still no. Hmm. I think they could do a, like a free trial period, but I don't think it could be free indefinitely. <laughs> a 10-year free trial with purchase of television. <laughs> <laughs> it also needs to be on all the time and spying so that we can get yeah. that consumer data. Although I got my parents a Fire TV and they love it. And they don't care about the spying. And you know, why would they? They really don't have anything to hide. But they love going on those weird apps that just have the old TV shows. Oh. <laughs> it's all ad driven because they don't care about commercials. They're used to it. So I'd say that's a good value if you're just looking for like unlimited old TV content. I might have to hit that up with mom then. Just cause. And the Alexa for old people is actually super easy. Cause I could like trying to teach them how to change inputs. Forget about it. I'm still yeah. struggling with that. But Alexa search YouTube for this. They can do that. Hmm. Yeah. It's super, super helpful. That's horrifying. And those TVs will decode, uh, X264 and X265. 
Well, that won't help. From USB. The old people that I have to deal with. Yeah, but it'll help people who are just looking for a cheap TV. (laughs) Those file names are being reported to the mothership. (laughs) Don't worry. Oh, they're obfuscated from Usenet. Don't worry. (laughs) Just a string of numbers. And Amazon is doing something else that is, uh, you know, I mean, you got to create warehouses if you're going to be Amazon, right? But the optics of this. It looks awful. The pictures are amazing. I want to frame this and put it in my office. (laughs) (laughs) Amazon to open a $21 million state-of-the-art warehouse in Tijuana slum. All right, ready? Ooh, this is not a good look. Uh, All I could think when I saw some of these images was like, Goya, Niscazi, like that horrible scene from the movie. Where you'd see all the warehouses and the slums right next to them. Oh my god! Which movie are we talking about? You've never seen Koyo? I think I talked about this with you, and you're like, "Oh, that's that art house bullshit." Oh, you sent me a YouTube link for yeah. that. Yeah. Nobody knows what that is, Chris. Oh, people love that. I love that movie. Um, District Nine is that what it is? That's a, there's a lot of vibes of that. Do you think that uh, you know the guy in this little hovel closest to the warehouse is like, "Bro, my southern exposure"? <laughs> there are rules against this. I know in like the UK where you can't block light like this. I guess there are no such rules in Mexico. I don't think... Do you think these people own this land? I don't think that's how that's... What's going on here. I don't know. It just seems very dystopian. They got that little wall around it, but it ain't much of a wall. Where's the parking lot for this place? Why would they need parking? I don't know that there's roads. (laughs) You just go back to your hovel at the end of the day. Tijuana's kind of known for, like, cartel, right? Uh, I think Tijuana is... It's like a tourist area slash cartel. Tijuana is border town. So I think it's less cartel and more, you know, just like tourist trap. Oh, okay. We can't make fun of the cartel stuff anymore because some of the videos that I've seen of people like looting a target in like, you know, Portland and some of the other cities around here is crazy. The loss prevention people can't do anything and people are just like, all right, I'm just going to steal everything. And they're like, well, yes, you are. That's a little different than kidnapping, murdering children, or, I don't know, soaking a tire in gasoline, putting it over your head and setting fire to it. Yeah. Now, I'm not with the, the riders and the looters at all, but I'm not going to rank them up there with the cartel. <laughs> if, I, if you're like, okay, you have to make an enemy out of one of these two groups. No, it's not even a question. Well, do you think the Amazon warehouse will water down the cartel so that they'll be satisfied with stealing Kindles instead of setting people's tires on fire? No, I think the cartel will do a robust business selling methamphetamine to the Amazon workers. Well, that is kind of what happens even here, like in eastern Kentucky with the factories. Like, that's where you get the pills. Although I guess meth would be harder for them to get than cocaine, right? Well, here, it's, 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 uh, the factory actually benefits because you have these superhuman workers that are able to basically like hand assemble a tractor trailer. And up until the point where their addiction overtakes them and then they just fall out. But that's even better. Before they can get anywhere near like benefits or getting past the trial period to go into a higher pay grade, they're going to die. Tijuana is making a lot of sense. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think that affects us too much, though. I think it's just for uh, distribution in their local area. Yeah. So if you live in Tijuana and you've got money, you might all of a sudden be getting two-day prime, which is going to be great. (laughs) That's a... Well, this reality makes me sad. <laughs> and convenience is the name of the game when it comes to Amazon. They are always looking for ways to make it more convenient. God, they're good at it. And it just keeps spreading. Amazon's cashierless tech is coming to Whole Foods next year. Quote, unquote, just walk out. Go to Whole Foods. We know who you are before you've even got in the door because we scanned your license plate. Not really, but they know. Scan your palm. <laughs> and uh, just go buy stuff and we know what you picked up and what you touched. And then leave, and we'll bill you. And not just that. We know everything that you looked at. We know what you picked up and put back. We know that you fondled some grapes. We know that. You got some surprise grapes in your groceries last week, <laughs> I, got a, I got a delivery from Kroger, and one of the bags had one grape in it, and I didn't order grapes. <laughs> you should have eaten it. That was a free grape. What do you What do you name that column in the big data analytics? Is like a grape sampler <laughs> one? <laughs> a produce grazer. <laughs> Well, Microsoft is getting ready for the big Windows 11 launch coming next month, and uh, they're still tweaking it a little bit, as <laughs> as Microsoft is wont to do. These stories make me think that it's not ready for launch in yeah. less than a month. Has anything Microsoft has launched in the last 10 years been ready? I mean, come on. You use Teams every day. <laughs> Microsoft reportedly broke Windows 11 by injecting ads. And so. if you want to stop that from happening, they do give you the registry entry to delete down here. They're advertising other Microsoft things on the start menu, 
And apparently the start menu is so poorly coded that if it gets an unexpected response from the server, your start menu just no longer works. And ads are not the only thing it's pulling from the cloud. It's also pulling weather. And uh, if you have like, if you subscribe to those little animated blocks that have news and stuff. <laughs> What's shockingly bad programming? It's all coming from the cloud. And if it can't get to the cloud, eh, we'll just crash. I guess everybody else is busy working on things that matter. And that's why they left the interns to do this. <laughs> you mean their main operating system? <laughs> <laughs> I, was gonna say, I would feel like this would be the money maker. I feel like this would be the, the head engineers, not the interns. Nah, nah. I think their cloud service is the big one now, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. The Azure division has uh, has sucked away all of the, all, all of the people. <laughs> They're like, just put ads on here. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's, it's not hard. It's like, Jimmy, what are you doing? He's like, I was a janitor here three years ago, and we had so many vacancies that I was the only one. And I only just overheard the people that left. But they got to hang on to that Windows market share. I mean, yeah. that's, that's crazy to let that go. It's all they got. Other than, you know, Azure. Yeah, but I don't think Azure can live on its own. Like, there's going to be a, a young upstart that does it better. Uh -huh. And you don't have that name recognition anymore. <laughs> hey, as long as they offer SQL Server in the cloud for a fraction of the price of what you can pay the, the license for, then Azure's going to be there forever. It's a sad thing to say, isn't it? Yeah. And another thing that I think probably will happen perennially for as long as we're alive. Do you see this ever ending? No. Every September. This year's Apple event, the Apple iPhone 13 launch, happened September 14th at the biggest Apple event of the year. Why not go ahead and make it on the 13th just to make it the 13th? 13th. Consume. <laughs> Buy new product and get excited for next product. I got the the new iPhone, I guess. I didn't really care. <laughs> the battery much. lasts thirty minutes longer because we put the CSAM detection stuff in hardware now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what now? <laughs> well, can you just save forty five minutes by not doing that? I think it's virtual again, right? Like they're not even doing it in person. Yeah, yeah it's all virtual. Seems like everybody's given up on that now. Apple really likes the virtual events because it it presents an unrealistically clean image of reality, which is what Apple wants to project. But I would it's, think if you want to hype people up, you want to like show the crowd yelling and stuff. Like no, it's uh, I, I mean, that was the Steve Jobs thing. Now it's like it's super sterile. It's even more sterile than Star Trek, which is really just crazy. It, it's mm -hmm. so sterile that it makes me think that like the people that are presenting, like when the presentation's over, they just go into sleep mode and stand <laughs> where the last I saw them until the next presentation. They go sit in a white room and eat some saltines. <laughs> a little white LED in their ear blinks to show that they're sleeping. I think about uh, that, like that sterile image. There was a great character in uh, Terry Pratchett's Discworld series. He was the captain of the guard at the city, and he was so strict and by the book and like such a stick in the mud. He preferred to read music than to listen to it. <laughs> That's what I think about Tim Cook in this role. Right? I can see him just sitting in his office, like, ah, oh, yes, Mozart. <laughs> but. If you are looking to the big competitor, I guess Samsung is the big competitor, but old Google is trying. <laughs> oh, they're trying. Once again, Google fumbles. They're getting some stuff wrong. Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL phones are getting stuck in EDL mode and seemingly bricked. There Ooh. doesn't appear to be any clear solution to the issue. And Google is oddly silent on the Ooh. issue, as they often are. <laughs> so EDL mode is a way to get your stuff. It's a recovery mode in case if there's a catastrophic failure. You can still pull data off of the phone. Well, at least we have that. And you're supposed to be able to just reboot to get out of it. Doesn't seem to be happening here. Oops. Oops. And Intel, we know, has been in talks with the Biden administration to get some of that sweet, sweet $3 trillion uh, bounty that's coming up for grabs. But they are not just operating locally. They're going abroad. Intel to invest up to $95 billion in European chip making amid U.S. expansion. Intel has said, we don't think there's going to be enough capacity, even with the nearly a trillion dollars that we're going to be spending here in America, plus everybody else spending money in the world. We need to also bring things up in Europe. Do you think that we will get to a point, a, a beautiful little golden age that might last three months, where we have too many chips after all this? <laughs> Probably in 2025. I don't know if we'll ever get there, though, because it's they an can acceleration. stop at any time. Yeah. yeah. We'll see, the problem is that the cost and availability because you got to look at all the billions of people in the emerging markets it's like when the computer revolution happened in america that was like 200 million people and so it's a lot of potential computers but now it's happening all over the world and a lot of people their first and only computer is like their phone or their portable handheld device and that acceleration will only continue 
Hmm. Sounds like you're promoting a war with China, like the rest of our government. <laughs> we need to sell them American phones, not Chinese phones. Although I don't think we can call them emerging anymore, right? They've yeah. emerged. They've come out of the cocoon. It's not what we expect. Are they Mothra? They came out of the cocoon, and their their uh, capitalistic hunger is so extreme, we see uh, sort of a backlash from the establishment. Chris, that's Japan. Either and way. Your racism is not welcome in this <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, oh, woolly worm update. That was the oh. other thing I wanted to talk about sometime during the news. I have seen three woolly worms so far. Two of them black, one brown. So just FYI for your winter storm predictions, that means it's going to be a bad winter. But what about the brown one? The brown one is an outlier so far. So far it's two black, one brown. Do you think he's like the Alex Jones of woolly worms? It's going to be a mild winter. <laughs> he's like screaming. <laughs> You're crazy, Alex. Yeah. Oh, you got any more... Uh, Oh, I'll give you an animal update. So uh, my cats are very spooky. Like, you know, the scaredy cat phrase, yeah. they, they embody it. And they have, you know how uh, when you, the impalas are at the watering hole and they, there's always one with its head up. And if that one leaps, they just bolt like all of them. I think that instinctual thing is what was at, at play here. So Toast was on the couch behind me on top of it. I'm sitting here on the couch. <clears throat> croutons in the floor chewing on the blue bird as he always does and we're just hanging out nothing is happening and then something happens i don't know what but something triggered crouton and he bolts he just he doesn't think he just bolts that infects infects uh toast <laughs> who <laughs> we're gonna get demonetized now because i mispronounced that word so he comes across me <laughs> to get to the door which is over here so he hits me with the front paws first, oh, wow. and then the back paws. <laughs> oh, that looks like it's going to get infected. Yeah, peroxide it every night. <laughs> Aren't oh. you glad you got cats? Oh my god! What good boys! I was so furious. <laughs> Why did this happen? Oh, we can all laugh at your suffering. It's fine. Yeah, good cats. And uh, boy, it would have been nice if I could have got that on video. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I was wearing these. But I'll tell you what. He was like a little 13-pound bullet. I didn't even know what happened until he was already in the kitchen. I was like, what's happening? And I'm bleeding. Why do I hurt? Yeah. <laughs> oh, ow. But yeah, I could have got a nice video of it. <laughs> Facebook debuts its Ray-Ban Story smart glasses. Spoiler alert, they're not smart at all. They have a built-in camera with an LED that shows you when they're on. They have a touch thing on one side. They're not augmented reality. There's not even a heads-up display. Uh, there's a Bluetooth audio thing, and that's it. Very underwhelming. I didn't understand. The, like, the audio sounds like it's just a speaker, right? Not yeah. a bud. So you're going to be playing noises when you're walking around. Oh, uh, That is, like, the most douchey thing in the world. To be walking down the street and, like, blaring your music. Also, there is an LED. Whenever you are filming or taking pictures, it will blink or light up. Oh, tiny piece of black paint couldn't possibly yeah. cover it <laughs> <laughs> or just get in there with a knife and pop it yeah. out <laughs> but it's a partnership with ray-ban you know they're known for stuff so i guess it's fine here's the the regular model that this is based on and then the the bigger one obviously is the ar so it's not too much bigger how quick will we find a chinese knockoff of these just like real ray-bans i don't know the miniaturization is a big part of it that's gonna be tough for he song to do there's not, and there's not any actual augmented reality yet. Maybe that's in the plan, but these don't do that. Yeah, these are really just spy glasses at this point, right? Yeah. Which is not going to help Facebook's reputation. <laughs> I just want to record a video of this clip. We're living in the worst future. And lossless audio. That's, a, that's something that I have flirted with in the past, but it is so annoying because you're dealing with a lot of storage, a massive amount of storage. And Qualcomm says... And we're going to make it better. Qualcomm debuts its lossless Bluetooth audio streaming with aptX lossless. Bluetooth and lossless, thanks to Qualcomm? What? Now, the bad news is you're going to have to have a chip in the machine that's generating the music and whatever is receiving it. So if you have Bluetooth headphones right now, Not they work. won't work with this. It's so a different codec. Get ready to buy all new stuff. Uh. You think they'll be able to cram one of those chips in an AirPod? Yeah, I'm sure. Although Apple won't want to do that because then they, it won't be something that... Back to Qualcomm, right? Yeah. Uh, I guess they'll make their own. 
And it won't play certain songs. No. <laughs> because they'll be banned for whatever reason. Well, Microsoft, uh, they were one of the first to come back and say, everything's better. We're going back to work. That was premature. Microsoft gives up, predicting when its U.S. offices will actually fully reopen. Womp womp. Because we don't know. What is, oh, it. that's a sign. Look at the sign. It's bent. <laughs> Someone has run into that. It's funny. Yeah. What? Uh, I think Google also already backed off, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think all of them have. Because we don't know. We haven't heard too much about a lot of the big tech companies talking about their self-driving cars. Remember that was the only thing they wanted to talk about? <laughs> they only wanted to talk about electronic vehicles and self-driving. Yeah. And nobody figured it out. It's amazing that nobody did it. And so now we're just shuffling things around. Ford has hired the Apple car chief in a coup for the recovering automaker. Ford still can't manufacture anything, but uh, maybe they're onto something. It's like, what's Apple up to with their car? Again, I don't think Apple was working on a self-driving car. I think Apple just wanted the iCar that worked with all their accessories. Now, they were, remember they partnered with somebody. Yeah, but I mean, that was like, that was like GM partnering with <laughs> Nikola. Because <laughs> we don't even remember the name of it. Yeah. 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 So, uh, I will see. There it is. What is it? We, I mentioned this story in the government section. Oh, yeah. Well, Bitcoin. So, it turns out that uh, Salvador? Why didn't they not say El Salvador? I don't know. Reuters. There's probably some sort of difference that we don't know that's like subtle. It's because it's a gender, isn't it? Uh, oh, L? my God. L isn't. <laughs> L, L is just the word the. Oh, okay. Well, it doesn't make any sense, does it? Also, all the words in Spanish are gendered. Well, the in French is gendered. Yeah, but I think... Yeah, but it's, isn't it L? It's something else if it's different, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought it was always L. Is it? La. Oh, yeah, what's the difference? I, there? I guess maybe is it is female, a gendered right? thing. Yeah, huh. in French. I don't know about Spanish. If so, you speak Spanish and you know why it's sometimes El Salvador and sometimes just Salvador, let us know, because we don't know. I think it's woke, which is insulting to the El Salvadorans. But anyway, uh, they're rolling out Bitcoin, and it seems like the people at the lowest economic scale don't <laughs> understand it and maybe fear it. Reuters, the article is, uh, Salvador Street protest breaks out against Bitcoin adoption. There's some pictures. Uh, they're concerned that this is not really good for street vendors and merchants and things like that because it's too hard to do stuff with it. You know, not everybody has phones and the electronic stuff, and they're a little bit worried about monitoring and grifting and taxes and that kind of thing. As you might imagine, at the low end of the economy, you play it fast and loose with what the, uh, you know, what the rules are around that kind of thing. I just want to point out to the YouTube censors that was male nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ban us. Don't worry. I was not expecting that <laughs> in this Reuters story. Great outfit, though. So yeah, uh, they also pointed out that they were they had like a tent set up with a group of people in a city center, and they were like, "Oh, come and we'll help you set up the app on your phone," and uh, didn't work. Yeah, it was down. Do you want this? No, it's oh, fine. I saw, I saw you like eyeing it a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's an it. orange soda. Oh, you didn't you didn't start the episode with that, did you? Or did you? No, no, I didn't. It's a it's lemon. It's very lemony. It's a lemon gumdrop in liquid form. Oh. It is, uh, it's nice. It's not orange, so it fails in that regard. Uh, it does not taste like it's 120 calories, so it's potentially dangerous. What about Country Time Lemonade? It, it tastes like more or less? It tastes like less okay. than 120 calories. And it may be because it's so acidic. It's very acidic. It's very, very puckery. Well, it is lemon. So, uh, versus the Country Time, Country Time has got this beat hands down. Wow. Country Time is a very sugary lemonade. It's kind it of is, a smooth, yeah. like non-tart. They make like a country time powdered drink that you can put in your drinks when you're hiking. It's also incredible. If you're looking for tart, this has definitely got country time beat. But other than that, country time is just a, a better drink. Rank that uh, against all the San Pellegrinos you've had so far. F. Bottom. Whoa. The last one. Bottom. That's what I thought. I have a feeling it's going to be the letter grade spectrum to the pure orange one. Or possibly the blood orange one, which I've also had and is quite good. That's just your bias toward oranges. Probably, yes. Coming out, yeah. yeah. Well, RuneScape, I know that's a popular game with a lot of people. I played RuneScape for like 10 seconds back in, you know, probably like 2000-something. Uh, yeah. And it just seemed like a lot of grinding and wasting time. <laughs> but that version, I think that, that 2000s version one, is the one that everybody's like super nostalgic about, that everybody wants, kind of like World of Warcraft. You know how yeah. They, they redid the old classic one. 
And that means that the people who have recreated it in high definition are in trouble. Third party HD clients, a statement from RuneScape. Basically, don't do it. We own it. What are you doing? We're going to sue you. Which is the new the new hotness, really. Yeah, it is. It's a story we've seen before and we continue to see. Take Two is now suing enthusiasts behind the GTA fan projects RE3 and REVC. These are projects that were up on GitHub and you have to own the Grand Theft Auto games in question in order to take advantage of this. But because the authors have posted stuff online, Take Two feels like they've got a really strong case to say, we think that this is going to induce people to piracy. I don't think that's really true because you still have to have the original games in order to play the uh, upsampled games. But clearly Take Two thinks there's a lot of money to be made in selling remastered versions of their own games. That's probably what motivates these lawsuits. And I think that's fundamentally wrong. It's and kind of killing PC gaming, isn't it? The RuneScape thing was the same thing. They, when they reached out to those people, they're like, hey, we are planning this product. And it's that whole Amazon chicken and egg question, right? Yeah. Were you planning it before I did it? <laughs> and you saw that people really liked it? We own know. that. And it's like, well, you have fans. I mean, It's, it's, it's but, killing the modding community and it's killing PC gaming. But they did create it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What if somebody came along and just started killing it with Boiler Snake merch? I'd be angry. <laughs> It made like a cartoon, boiler snake cartoon. Oh, like, I think like the Hamburglar, but it's the boiler snake. There is there is definitely something to be said there because it's like if you look at Grand Theft Auto as a franchise, they've made hundreds of millions of dollars, and what these individuals are doing probably could make money, but it's probably on the order of like a million or two dollars. But where Grand Theft Auto is in terms of like it has a cultural contribution, like it's a part of identity it's a part of culture in some small way and the money that they've made from that is an easy way to measure that (laughs) yeah but i understand where you're going there you're going to the star trek route but if you carve out that exemption that anything with cultural relevance can be treated in this way how quick does the chinese communist party say that everything (laughs) has that cultural relevance? i think they're already doing that and that's what we see yeah they're kind of saying that about Didi, right yeah that's kind of their argument yeah so that's dangerous were those particular mod makers, or were they making money off of it? I don't no, it was on so. GitHub. No, it was open source. See, that's what I don't get. Like, but they did it right when that guy fixed the load times. Just hire them. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> why would you punish someone who loves your game that much and is not making money off of it? Like, oh, yeah, that was the other the other thing I was going to mention with both the RuneScape and the other thing. I'm not sure about the RuneScape's finances, but Take Two's fairly public. They've made such an insane amount of money. What if anybody even tangentially connected to this project? You know, they just set aside a $15 million budget and carve that up according to, like, who did the work or whatever. They figured that out. That doesn't even need to be public. These problems would go away without a lawsuit and no, no ill will from the community. And you get this sort of grassroots innovation on yeah. every future game. You're yeah. going to reap so much from that. And actually, you're getting way more from them than you're giving them. Yeah. Because, even at, like, $15 million. Yeah. It, you know, you've made over a billion dollars from this game. You can afford a few million dollars. Come on. Now, the problem you get into there, though, is like, you know, that source code could have some stuff in it that's going to get you in trouble. Well, I mean, again, when you've got millions of dollars as a budget, those problems go away by just having people paid to look at it. That's a tough job. <laughs> it's your job to go over the fan submitted code. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't code. This is just. Weird MLP images. <laughs> this class is telling me a story about some My Little Pony fan fiction. And yet it compiles. Well, we talked uh, last week or the week before. Which it seems like the worm has turned on anti-cheat. People used to hate anti-cheat because it would get in there and do weird things to your system. You Still couldn't does. get rid of it. Yeah. It was, it was like running at such a low level that potentially it could look at everything that you were doing. But now it seems that the plebs are instead screaming for it. Valorant's Vanguard enforcing both TPM and Secure Boot on Windows 11. Yes, that's right, there's a game that not only has a kernel module, but will actually use hardware security features to enforce the integrity of the game. Now, this might sound good if you're a competitive or a ranked player, but this is the beginning of the end for PC being an open platform. Because before too long, that whole like CSAM thing that Apple is happening, this is how that will be forced down our throats. Your computer's going to run code that... Not only can you not audit, you don't know what it's doing. Yeah. And you're going to get to a point where it's like, um, you're going to need to register with Facebook 
to continue to boot into Valorant mode. <laughs> Horrifying. Surely. As is this, WhatsApp, as we know, has touted many times end-to-end encryption. And I think Wendell uh, coined end-to-end-to-end <laughs> encryption. Although I think I would improve it where it's end-to-Zuckerberg-to-end <laughs> encryption. And they're now getting called out on it. WhatsApp moderators can read your messages. WhatsApp isn't the impenetrable private messaging service that Facebook likes to claim ProPublica finds. What a wonderfully smug image of Zuckerberg to include with the article as well. <laughs> ah, I just read your messages. <laughs> So they, they've got all these screenshots and stuff with the website that says, no, this is end-to-end, -end. we can't do anything with this. But ProPublica's got a pretty convincing argument that, well, that's not actually true. I think it's freedom of information, right? We know for sure. Yeah. Uh, if someone flags an Instagram conversation, the moderator who must then look at that conversation will see the last five messages in the conversation. And right. there's nothing you can do to stop that. You don't know when your stuff is going to get flagged. You don't even know that it's happening, but it is. And if they can go back five messages against that encryption, they can go back an infinite number of messages against that encryption. Well, it, I, could, I, th I think if the flag thing copy-pastes the last five messages in an unencrypted form, that would be about the only way to do that. But the flag happens after the fact. That would be a problem. Yeah. If it was encrypted, there, the flag could do nothing. Yeah. The flag would have to happen on the client device and then send the contents of those messages unencrypted. And Facebook knows. <laughs> they have learned that, for the most part, people hate them and certainly don't trust them. They understand what Facebook's business model is to some extent. We've gotten past that whole misleading thing. We're not misleading at all anymore. <laughs> mm, yeah. I think the last election pretty much... <laughs> Nailed that coffin shut, right? <laughs> so they have to try and figure out how to get over that. And they have such a beautiful corporate phrase to describe everyone hates us. <laughs> Facebook admits a quote-unquote trust deficit as it looks to launch a digital wallet. <laughs> we want to launch a digital wallet. You remember that whole Libra thing? Well, let's not talk about Libra. But we do want to make it easy for people to buy and sell things on the Facebook marketplace. And that trust deficit, in a big way, is affecting lawmakers <laughs> when they look at this kind of thing. Now, when you say you're going to do this, are you really going to do this, or are you going to do some sort of, you know, like a monkey's paw version of what you say? Trust deficit. <laughs> I'm going to have to work that into an email at some point. With <laughs> I think we have a trust deficit here. And uh, this is a blast from the past. This happened a long time ago. It has taken this long for Facebook to apologize. Wow. Facebook apology is AI labels black men as primates. So people were watching a video and they got a pop-up after the video that was like, would you like to watch more videos about primates? The problem was it was not primates in the video. Genuinely sorry. 2015, this happened in 2015. It took them six years. I feel like we've done a lot of stories where AIs cannot accurately gauge black people, unfortunately. Yeah. But, it's hard to even remember them. There's but, been so many. Well, that one was certainly one of the worst in terms of optics, right? Yeah. I don't know, arresting that guy in Michigan, that was pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, hunting him down across to the next neighboring city. It's like, you think we got the, the wrong person, Quimby? Nah. Yeah. Uh, you know, racial epithets or whatever in an infinite amount do not equal to false imprisonment. Right. <laughs> but, no, but neither's good. So I think that algorithm is still out there, though. They just oh, yeah. fixed it up a little bit. Oh, very slightly. Oh, and they point out... That it's more white space. The fix at the time, and I remember we talked about this, it wasn't to stop the algorithm or to fix it. It was to censor searches for gorillas. <laughs> Great. So G -G. it was still mislabeling them, but you couldn't do the search to see it. <laughs> to do. We'll fix that later. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. To do. <laughs> uh, and... We talked about Facebook's moderation and all the stuff, all the stuff that they're setting up with. Uh, but who's doing it? Now, we've talked about this in the past, but the New York Times has really gone down the rabbit hole. There is one company <laughs> that is making a mint by just sacrificing their employees' sakis <laughs> to the Facebook gods. The silent partner cleaning up Facebook for $500 million a year. So basically, Facebook pays them $500 million a year, and they do content moderation because Facebook can't figure out how to do it and this is probably a great way to insulate themselves from liability because oh boy it will mess you up now this is Accenture 
it's a staffing company for IT staffing. And at some point they figured out, oh, yeah, let's just throw bodies at Facebook because they talk about how this grew from uh, like $12 million to $500 million. That's how much horrible stuff is moving through Facebook at any given time. I believe it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're going to look at one here in a second. Yeah. And another great New York Times story that, I, I mean, I don't like the, the tone of this, but it does raise an interesting question. In the world of viral videos, what if you're just a bystander? Mm. You have no capacity to choose whether or not you take part in a lot of these things. And the example they give here is much worse than that. How far can you go to resist being the subject of a viral video? So here's the story. There's a kind of viral video challenge that's the I just hit on your girlfriend challenge. Wow. So the game is you see a couple and they, you know, especially if they're holding hands or being affectionate or whatever, you go up, you completely ignore the guy and you hit on the girl and someone films it. This guy did that, got punched in the face. Who's in the wrong there? Mm. <sighs> but here's the thing. By punching him in the face, not only is he still in the video, but it went super viral. Yeah. <sighs> and now he's the guy that punches. And they bring up, like, what about, the, remember the kid that was smirking at the Native Americans? Yeah. And that was completely out of context? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. The example I was thinking of was the Twisted Tea guy. That meme that went around at the beginning of 2021 where he smacked someone with the Twisted Tea. Was that real? I think that was real. Oh, it's was like that? like a gas station, yeah. Oh, okay. But, but that's just it. you being aggressive with no one. Was he provoked? Yeah, he was super provoked. The guy was yelling racial slurs at him. Oh, okay. And that's why someone started filming. And then the guy finally just got sick of it and turned around and slapped him in the face with the twisted T. But I think the rule is uh, verbal provocation is never enough, right? Yeah, no. Yeah, I think so. That would, that I mean, would, I get it. But. That would technically be assault. Although you get racial slurs in front of a jury right now, I think you got a decent chance. Mm. I mean, you shouldn't, but I bet you do. I don't know. I don't want to be... I mean, you know, I want to be in viral videos, but I only want to be on viral videos on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure if you that had cameras control. rolling 24-7 and they captured the, uh, the, cat, the claw yeah. attack. <laughs> I, when I chased him down, like, thankfully, something in my mind clicked and it was like, not right now. Don't do this <laughs> right now. You'll hurt this cat. And I was like, my hand, my hand around his neck and my, and my other fist was clenched. And I was like, okay, we're not doing this. <laughs> Instead, I went with a psychological approach. Uh... He's on an affection embargo <laughs> indefinitely. I haven't touched him in three days. He's not allowed on the couch at all oh. anymore, and that is killing him. Do you think he even realized what he did? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he ran direct, like every hiding space that he could find in the house. He, no, I mean, he, like, do you think he put it together that my owner is angry because I ran across him and ripped his ass yeah, up? Well, yeah, because I screamed. Yeah. And there was blood running down my arm as I was holding his neck. I think he put it together. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and our final story is not a story at all, but this is Krista's Facebook Marketplace Abortion of the Week. I, uh, I often talk about the marketplace as being the only reason you should even consider looking at Facebook, and this is why. Look at this post. This, uh, the teeth look like post-it notes. Are those actual wood? Can they see us? Or can they see, they can yet, see no, us? Yeah. Not yet. This is... Uh, I, I, I can't tell. I think it is post-it notes. This should be in the Museum of Modern Art. I just noticed they put the laugh on top of it, too. Yeah. <laughs> to make it even more white trash. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Chad, are you ready for it? SpongeBob side table. They wanted $150 for this. They got 75 I think. Can you do a SpongeBob impression? Oh, he's got, like, a really, like, nasal voice. Yeah, I don't know that I can do I it. I can't do it. I, would, I, would, eh, I want to like do, I want to say, kill me in SpongeBob. <laughs> That's, yeah. The first time I saw that, all I could, I think there's multiple photos of it, maybe. There might just be one. Oh, no, don't do that. Oh, no. There's just other other posts nearby you only need one photo to sell this magic why is his mouth open i feel like she took a, a drawer out mm. and then painted all of it red yeah you could have just painted the drawer and made it well maybe not i don't know I'm having a hard time picturing spongebob i didn't watch a lot of spongebob I was, I was too old he had the well he's got the tie on in that photo 
that's what that thing dangling off the bottom, that's supposed to be his tie. And then the legs are, you know, his really, actual legs. He really doesn't have much of a lower body, right? What no. about the back legs on the table? We can't see them, but they can't be SpongeBob because he doesn't have four legs. Unless she put them there. There's also arms on the side, I think. Oh, yeah. Are those doll arms? Dude, those are doll arms. <laughs> It's weirder the long. <laughs> Someone paid seventy five dollars to have that in their home. Look at the hand on this one. We gotta we gotta zoom in here. I think one of those hands is backwards. <laughs> what is the the its left hand? Is that not twisted around and backwards? The zoom was perfect there. It's like robot hands, I think. I don't know. Oh yeah, it's like little. <laughs> Where did you? <laughs> wow. What Send us your weird Facebook marketplace posts on the forum. That, this is probably like the top one I've seen in a long time. Hopefully I can find something this good next week. Not hopefully, Krista. You owe us one of these every, every week. Every week. We'll see. Maybe that I can look at that same poster every time. You think they're still making furniture? I hope so. Oh, you should send them a Facebook message and be like, I loved your SpongeBob. Can you please do X? And then like oh. keep doing crazier. Sailor Moon. It's got to be Sailor Moon or Sonic. All right. Are we done? You got to say bye. Bye.